Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna go over my 3DS automation hardware project. I have been low-key obsessed with this over the last couple of weeks, and I wanted to walk you through all of the stuff that I learned, as well as how I made this possible, and uh, some small demos of it as well. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so as you may have seen from the thumbnail, uh, this is a very real project of a microcontroller hooked up through a USB cable and then a bunch of wires. <laughs> yeah, it is a little bit of a mess here, but a bunch of wires that are soldered directly to the 3DS motherboard and I can send commands from the computer and automate button presses on the 3DS. Uh, that was my goal and surprisingly everything worked, <laughs> but not through, uh, not without a bunch of faults before then. Um, I wanna show you kind of the setup that I have that makes this work. Uh, I did not, I was unable to find a capture card that I could actually purchase on the internet, so I am using an extremely jank uh, webcam hooked up while well, connected in a <laughs> a cardboard box to block out light. I was going to build it out of wood, but the temporary solution worked well enough, so I just stuck with it, uh, feed that camera in here, and then I can use scripting to send serial commands to the USB port, and it can you know run the wires here. Uh, the basics for pushing a button on the 3DS is that the uh, test points for the buttons are run to 1.8 volts. And if you run them low, that is the same as pushing a button because it's essentially button connects a, or my understanding of it is that the button connects a circuit to ground and ground is low. And so that's how it detects button press. So all I need to do is drive these wires low and then that's how you detect a button press. Um, I learned a ton from this project and there were a bunch of projects that made this possible that I would have never gotten this far without them. Uh, the first is the iFixit guide for disassembling a 3DS motherboard. This step-by-step -step instructions were so good, <laughs> so helpful for making this possible. I would have never figured it out without this. Uh, and in fact, the first attempt at this did not go so well. Uh, I attempted to disassemble a 2DS and I managed to break it in every way possible. I did not quite understand the fragility of ribbon cables and, uh, well, we'll get more to that in a bit, but this guide was great. Uh, gives you a step-by-step, -step, all the tools that you need, as well as which things that you want to, you know, set aside this, do this in this order, you know, very, very detailed pictures of the tiny flaps that you need to change, uh, very detailed images and such. Very, very useful. This guide, <laughs> save my ass. Also, all these links will be in the description, so uh, I'll make sure to link those as well, um, as well as the code repository, uh, because that is also going to be linked in the description, uh, which has some of the same information that I'm going to go over in this video. Another video that was very, very helpful in this was this uh, other attempt at doing the same thing with uh, Pokemon X and Y and automating shiny catching through phishing. Um, I'll actually show you my version of this later. Uh, mine is a lot simpler than this, though they tried to do everything in Arduino land, whereas I preferred to do it more in software where I'm a lot more comfortable with things. Uh, but you can see that they have theirs hooked up and, and working similarly here. Um, this other uh, tutorial here is for installing a controller mod. And it turns out that my project is very similar to the controller mod in that I need to tie wires to every single pin that needs to be controlled by a controller mod. Uh, and I need to be able to access those somewhat outside of the 3DS. And so this was helpful for me understanding how to go about soldering and how to wire things up. And so um, this controller mod uh, helped me a lot in figuring out that part of things. Uh, the other thing that was really helpful is this random website, 3DS, 3dscapture.com. I think this is the actual controller mod uh, website, but they had a whole bunch of photos and annotated photos where uh, it pointed out what test points were important. So these are these are the, ex the extremely tiny dots on the motherboard that I was soldering wires to. Uh, I also found this website, which had a list of test points, and this helped me find, for instance, I needed uh, 1.8 volt logic, since that's what the buttons speak. And I needed to also know like where all of the buttons are. Now they are also listed in, I believe it's this file here for uh, this controller mod. 
but this was helpful for getting a few of them that were not listed there. For instance, the controller mod works on 3.3 volt logic, which I don't think is right. I think this is actually a mistake, but uh, the 3DS handles apparently 3.3 volt logic to the buttons just fine. Um, I would not recommend using 3.3. I did 1.8 to make sure it actually matched what the buttons were. But anyway, so that is kind of the resources that I used. Now I want to walk you through uh my step-by-step -step process for getting this working as well as some of the stomach blocks i had along the way uh the first is the 2ds this was the first uh attempt at implementing this controller project and i learned in retrospect that the 2ds is probably the easiest one to mod uh the reason being that the test points are very far apart it is a big device and so they're you know spread out very nicely you have to take apart a lot less to get access to the test points because both of the screens are on one side. You can get access to the test points a lot easier by taking many fewer parts off. Uh, whereas the, the, the standard 3DS is like a 19 step process. I think this is like a six step process to get to the point where you can solder. Uh, so the 2DS is, I would recommend that if I were going to do this again. Um, but <laughs> we did not succeed in taking apart the 2DS very well, broke a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, the first big stumbling block is actually the screws in the 2DS or the 3DS. Uh, the screws have a little cross point on them, but they are not Phillips head screws. They are what is called JIS. Uh, JIS is slightly different from Phillips in that it is, I think it's believe it's more squared off than Phillips, which is a little bit rounded. And uh, JIS screws are specifically designed, or it seems specifically designed to strip if you use a Phillips head on them. And we managed to strip every single screw on the 2DS. Uh, and the only way we could get some of the screws out was to make a shiv and manually uh, ratchet them out with, with this, this shiv here. Uh, I did manage to buy a set of JIS screwdrivers for the second uh, true 3DS disassembly as opposed to the 2DS disassembly. Um, also went on a trip to the local Radio Shack. Yes, in the year 2023, there is still a Radio Shack. Um, <clears throat> we went on a trip there, and the man inside was extremely excited to find somebody that was actually doing a hobby electronics project, since most of the store had been taken over by cell phones and other you know, consumer electronics, whereas you know, the, the hobby electronics store of Radio Shack is not really that much of a thing but we were able to buy a bunch of stuff that i needed for the project like i think i got some solder there i got some uh soldering tips and a few other things there but i went to an honest to god radio shack in 2023 um i remember going in college and there was like rows and rows of hobby electronic stuff and it was just it was reduced to just one shelf in a corner anyway uh, then I started taking part the 3DS. Uh, this is partway through disassembly, where each of the components have been taken off here. This is, for instance, the analog C stick. You know, got battery and back, pay back plates here. This, I believe, is the SD card, uh, which actually I think the SD card was the hardest part of disassembly. It is like glued to the to this part of the 3DS, and so you have to like very carefully pry it off. Very spooky. Uh, this is the Wi-Fi board. Um, probably the hardest part of reassembly is actually reattaching all of these ribbon cables. This isn't one of the ones that gets uh, detached, but detached, that's the word. Uh, this is one of the ones that gets detached. And these are very, very difficult to slot into place and um, get them wired back up. But uh, my partner is much better at it than I was, and uh, these two were, were a big pain. Um... This is an example of just how small the soldering is here. This is the first attempt at the wires that I used. These wires ended up being a little bit too thick to keep the 3DS closed well. Um, but you can see here, this is you know, probably about three quarters of a millimeter wide. Uh, and so very, very careful soldering here. Also, I had to be very careful not to bridge to the little metal points next to it. So see how there's these like metal pits sometimes next to them? Uh, and getting these three in here while not covering up these buttons was also very, very tricky. Uh, the 2DS doesn't have this problem as well. The, these points are far away from the button, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, another thing that I had to worry about is exposed solder down here will be on the back of the screen. Can't really see it here, but the screen back is sort of aluminum and you don't want to short through that. Um, but 
managed to get all those wires in and close it up, sort of. You can see it's not quite closed up here, uh, but was able to boot the 3DS. This was like kind of the first like, yes, it works. I was able to, to do all this soldering and not destroy the 3DS, um, but I ended up taking it apart and putting it back together, I think two or three times after this. Uh, one to put in thinner wires and then another to wire up some additional buttons that I had uh, skipped the first time because I didn't think I needed them, but decided to add them after the fact. Uh, this is a photo after switching out the wires for 32 gauge magnet wire. This is much, much thinner. I think this is like six or seven times thinner than the original wire that I was using, uh, which makes it you know easy to close this up without um, having to have you know the the clamshell still open. So this uh, thinner gauge wire was much, much, much better here. Um, and here's some results of this. Uh, this was the first shiny Pokemon that I got using this. Uh, this is a uh, Gorbis. Oh, I was gonna show videos. I have videos of a few of the methods. I've actually rotated the screen because the camera, <laughs> the camera takes in the other direction. So terminal output is up here, but this is the, uh, this is my version of the fishing thing. Uh, it is watching for exclamation marks to appear above the player's head, then pressing the A button immediately afterward. Uh, it then gets into a battle, figures out how long the bottom screen stays dark because there's a, a shiny animation when it is shiny and no animation when it's not. And that delay allows me to figure out whether it's shiny or not and eventually finds a shiny Pokemon. Um, I have a few other videos of some of the other things I did. Uh, this is for what's called SOS in Sun and Moon, which is basically a special wild double battle where you repeatedly faint the Pokemon on the left, and it has a higher chance of being shiny. Uh, and so my script had to maintain all sorts of state about how much PP it had, whether it had to Lepa Berries, attack, etc. A whole bunch of choice management um, based on this, and also some like um, text recognition to figure out whether it's doing that there. Uh, I already showed that one. Here's a random encounter script where I'm just trying to run back and forth and encounter Pokemon. In the wild, this is an X and Y. Uh, and then this is the most recent one that I've been running, which is, um, it's it's looking left and up right here in the corner. And this is enough to trigger an encounter uh, while not using repel steps. And so it's just moving very, very quickly here, uh, pressing W, A, W, A. That's why it's blah, 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 blah over here. Uh, and then eventually it will, eventually, <laughs> eventually it will encounter a Pokemon here. Uh, basically, I use the same strategy for finding if they're shiny for all of them. Uh, basically, looking at the delay between uh, some some UI element and another UI element. And if there's a shiny animation in between, it's going to be slower. But that's, that's the basics of that. Uh, <clears throat> another pitfall that I had while assembling this, uh, you'll notice that I'm using two level shifters here. Uh, these are not the original level shifter that I tried. These are what are called a unidirectional level shifter, which means uh, one side drives the voltage and the other side receives it. There are what's called bidirectional uh, level shifters, and these are the most common ones that are on the market. And I had absolutely no luck with these. Um, got out a multimeter, did a whole bunch of debugging with this, and found that sometimes they would only shift half the voltage, and sometimes they would not shift the voltage at all. Uh, sometimes the input side would be an output, sometimes the output side would be an input, and there was just, I just had all sorts of problems with these. I tried every single configuration, I read a whole bunch of stuff online, I had no success with this chip. Uh, but this chip worked like a dream. Uh, this is the, um, the level shifter that I ended up using here. Uh, this thing worked like a dream, very easy to use, and uh, was able to downshift my voltage from my Arduino to this. Oh, I guess I should talk about why I'm using a level shifter at all. So the logic on the 3DS board uses what's called 1.8 volt logic. This means that the high state is 1.8 and the low state is essentially zero. Uh, most uh, microcontrollers, most you know Arduinos, etc., Raspberry Pi, those sorts of things, will work in either 3.3 volt or 5 volt, and either of those two voltages will damage <laughs> a 1.8 volt uh, logic. Uh, system like the 3DS. And so what you need to do is translate, you know, translate your 5 or 3.3 volt logic to 1.8 volt logic so that you don't damage the uh, device here. 
but uh yeah that's that's all of that that's kind of this was really annoying uh i i'm glad that i read a bunch of stuff online and eventually found someone else being like why are you using a bi-directional shifter uh and that's what clicked for me and uh ended up finding this octal bus transceiver with three state outputs and it was very very nice um, I could have also wired this up myself. It actually isn't that tricky to do with a few resistors, but this is way simpler to look at and way simpler to explain. So I definitely went with the lazy option here. Uh, lastly, I wanted to talk about uh, why I set it up the way I did. You'll notice that I don't actually do much in the hardware side of this. It's really just microcontroller wires to uh, device and no other sort of you know, more complicated things like uh this this example did here uh where is there over in yeah didn't have all this complication uh and this was mostly because i wanted to reuse some of the code that i used for my switch microcontroller project uh which is actually set up very similarly where um you know pro microcontroller this goes into the switch this goes into my computer i feed serial over this and it controls this uh, similar to that, I feed serial into this, and it can control this as well. Uh, and pretty nicely, I was able to reuse a lot of the switch microcontroller code for my own uh, resetting here. So for instance, if we look at the phishing script here, this is the same engine that I had used uh, for my switch microcontroller, and I'm basically using the same state management. I did have to change a few things, like on the switch, I can use exact pixels and know, like, oh, it has to be this color. But when I have really bad camera input from, you know, a webcam in a box, I have to be a little bit more lenient on the colors that I see here. Uh, so I was able to take a region and uh, HSV values and then some threshold. And this is how I derive, you know, my state management and figure out where things are. Uh, the other thing is I have to rotate this text in the screen because, uh, you know, as you can see here, I'm dealing with it rotated 90 degrees. And so somewhere in here, I have like a uh, text lookup. Yeah, I had to use a, a different function to get rotated text instead. So um, this is where I am detecting what Pokemon got encountered so that I can ignore, I can ignore these two that I didn't care about and only go for the one I wanted. Uh, but I was basically able to reuse all the same code here. Uh, the other thing that I learned while doing this is a little bit of Arduino C++. Uh, I know you can do the little sketch files, but they felt a little bit too cheaty for me. So I wanted to figure out how to write C++ for it directly. Uh, now, granted, this looks very much like the you know, original Arduino code. You've got your Arduino.h. You've got your essentially setup block here. And then you've got your loop block down here. Um, and it looks very much the same, but... I wanted to I wanted to figure out how to write it in C++ myself and I threw together a make file where I learned about all of the little bits and bobs that get compiled in with your you know Arduino variants and uh how to build you know what what flags I needed to send to the uh, AVR C compiler to actually build out the object that I wanted um and so this was a lot of fun but anyway that's um that's my uh, 3DS microcontroller project. I <laughs> I got a lot better at soldering from this project. I, I think uh, that's probably the thing that I was most worried about, but very impressed with myself afterwards because this this soldering was was a lot of work. Um, but yeah, wouldn't have been able to do it without any, any of these guides, and the end result is just so cool. <laughs> I'm really happy with this. But anyway, hopefully you found this fun. Um, if you have additional things you'd like me to see, or you'd like to see, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.